Life of the Great Iron Mike was not without scandals, and the beast that trapped his victims in the ring to finish them was thought to be finished after a three and a half year stint in prison. When the rumor of his comeback started, many boxers thought it would be their chance to gain some prestige in an easy fight against the Great Iron Mike. However, Tyson was not going to let them tarnish his name so easily. In this video, we bring you some of the most memorable encounters of Mike Tyson after his prison sentence. Join us on a journey that reaffirms that no matter what is said about you, in boxing, fists have the final say. We open our top fights with a match that took place on August 19, 1999, at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. It wasn't just any fight in Tyson's professional career, it was his return to the ring after four years due to his prison sentence, making it highly anticipated and, when it happened, it set a new PPV sales record. Don King wanted Tyson back no matter what, and after much debate about who his first opponent would be, with rumors of a possible super fight against George Foreman, Peter McNeely was announced, a relatively unknown boxer who didn't hesitate to mock Tyson before facing him. McNeely believed Tyson would be an easy opponent to take down due to his prolonged prison stay. He boasted about how he would finish the Great Iron Mike in less than three rounds, but unknowingly, he was digging his own grave. That night, the fight lasted only 89 seconds, and Tyson had an easy victory by disqualification. While McNeely opened the fight aggressively, attacking Tyson, Mike avoided all of Peter's attempts and landed a right hook that left him on the canvas in less than 10 seconds into the bout. Referee Mills Lane allowed the fight to continue, and exchanges between the boxers continued until, a few seconds later, Tyson landed another right hook that once again knocked McNeely down. Lane had stopped that nonsense because it was starting to butt heads. Oh, McNeely's on the inside. Tyson seeming to just hang back there. Tyson with a left hook, a right hook, and down goes McNeely. It was then that Vinny Vecchioni, McNeely's manager, entered the ring requesting the fight to be stopped to prevent further harm to his fighter. For Iron Mike, it was a triumphant return. Unfortunately, that was the beginning of the end for Peter McNeely's prestige and career. Jumping ahead a bit in time, on December 16th of that same year, 1995, Tyson would step into the ring to face Buster Mathis Jr. The fight took place at the Core State Spectrum in Philadelphia, with the legendary Frank Cappuccino as the referee. Despite McNeely's devastating defeat, Mathis thought it would be a good idea to mock Tyson every chance he had to speak with the press, claiming that he was no longer the legend we all knew from the past decade. Tyson, cautious of any surprises Mathis Jr. might throw at him with his fists, eventually found the ideal rhythm to take control of the fight. The night of the encounter arrived, and Tyson was cautious of any surprises that Mathis Jr. might throw at him with the help of his fists. However, sooner rather than later, Mike found the ideal rhythm to take control of the fight. Money punches, there's a shot by Mike Tyson with the left. You know, jumping in, jumping out, pressing Mike, staying inside. We'll see what happens when he gets hit, though. And just good job slipping. Tyson misses. During the first two rounds, punches were exchanged, and everyone watched expectantly for any sign that one of the two boxers was rising above the other. The conclusion of this encounter came at 2 minutes and 32 seconds into the third round when Mathis Jr. was knocked down by a powerful Tyson punch and failed to beat Cappuccino's safety count. Tyson, use that right foot and pivot. Swing around on your opponent's side. Let's see again by Ducky. Yeah, trying to get the... Tyson's successive right hooks, 40 seconds before the end of the third round, ended all of Mathis Jr.'s chances of living up to his words. September 7, 1996, is another late date that shook boxing fans. Back at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Mike Tyson would now face Bruce Selden. Selden joined the countless list of victims who couldn't survive the first round against Mike Tyson. Every once in a while, you gotta step into the eye of the storm to get to Mike Tyson. After receiving two dubious power punches and being paralyzed by fear. That night, Selden fell twice in the ring, 
an act that caused controversy when debates began suggesting that it seemed he did it more out of fear than actually being hurt by the great Iron Mike. In his first fall, Tyson barely grazed Selden's head, and it took him until the count of six to get up. Stand straight up up there. Now that's not... After receiving the signal, Selden seemed to wait for Mike in the corner and took the opportunity of a left hook, not approaching Tyson's classic attacks, to once again throw himself to the canvas. When Selden got up, his legs trembled in such a convincing performance that referee Steele took him at his word and stopped the fight, awarding Tyson the victory by technical knockout. What Bruce Selden didn't know was that, trying to save his skin, he sentenced his career due to the cowardice of not going the distance in the ring. On January 29th, 2000, Mike Tyson made his debut in Europe, fighting against Officer Julius Francis at the Men Arena in Manchester. From the sound of the opening bell, the best warrior spirit of Tyson dominating the fight could be appreciated. In a span of four minutes, he made Francis fall a total of five times, with the first fall occurring 45 seconds before the end of the first round. After getting up four times, Francis received a right hook from Tyson that sent him to the canvas for the last time. Roy Francis, the referee of the bout, stopped the fight immediately, and Mike was awarded the victory by knockout at 58 seconds into the second round. Everything seemed to indicate that Tyson had no time to waste in this new millennium, as in his fight against Lou Savaris, the match ended only 38 seconds after it started. It was June 24, 2000, and Tyson would step into the ring at Hampton Park in Glasgow, Scotland, United Kingdom, only to get out in less time than it took him to get there. During the more than half a minute of the fight, Tyson managed to hurt Savarese with almost every punch he delivered, scoring his opponent's first fall just 15 seconds into the fight. And every punch that Tyson threw was like a kick from a horse and a fast running... After 26 seconds of the fight, referee John Coyle tried to intervene, but Tyson continued attacking Savarese and threw him to the ground with a left hook. In an attempt to stop the beast that Iron Mike had become, Savarese threw low blows until, after getting up, Coyle managed to stop the fight and awarded Mike the victory by technical knockout. These have been just some of the arrogant boxers who thought they could beat Mike Tyson after being absent for years. What seemed like his worst phase only served to reaffirm his position as a living legend while continuing to make history in the ring. Which of these fights was your favorite? We'll read your comments.